That's what she said. Are we sitting comfortably? The Doctor Who, our Hambra podcast. Uh, uh, yep. Real Doctor Who fans. Liam spooed himself with real Doctor Who opinions. I was adjusting, actually. Welcome, one and all, to the Doctor Who Alhambra podcast, episode number 299. This episode is titled, The Episode of the Invalids. I have a chesty cough, Brett has a cold, and Liam, we can only hear him in one ear. (laughs) Hope you're all doing well, and sit back and enjoy the ride. Excellent. (laughs) Ah, yeah. Uh, it's been a, a trying time for me, and I hope that you guys are well or will recover and be on the mend as soon as possible. And yeah, we have a just uh, random bag of uh, Doctor Who goodness for this uh, podcast because, um, yeah, this. Yeah. Yeah. We did not plan this. Uh uh-uh. uh. No, we didn't. Um But to be fair though, in our defense, there's not much actually really come out of the well, minute. As so, in news and I mean so there's you, drama, but there's yeah. always drama, right? You 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 say that so, so let, let's get into and prep what we're going to be doing for the up and coming podcasts and whatnot. Because I wanna we say the month from hell, and I feel as though uh Liam has not been super into doing this at all. And no, because it's the month from hell. It's going to be bloody awful. So I, I will I, I will <laughs> no. pose I will pose this to you because as I was kind of like mapping out a couple of future podcast episodes and whatnot, I'm like, you know what? I think the month from hell is gonna happen around the same time, which is Liam's favorite month of all which is the jolly old month of December filled with happiness, joy, and Christmas. So... Oh, yeah. Because here is... Let's just discuss what we're planning because I think that there is going to be... um, I think there's certain things that can be planned and I think the month from hell can possibly, even though it was supposed to be our Halloween episode... You know, this could be our Krampus episode or something like that, that uh, gets, you know, mm. that, you know, poor me and, Ooh, you know, Brett, Legion have been minding our own to... business, being like really nice and stuff like that. And then Liam goes and spoils it and we get end up getting the month from hell. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that was not my idea. <laughs> um, I know. I, I say always that. doing this. Exactly. So here's what I'm thinking, because this episode is going to come out in a week's time. So October 29th is when it's going to be released. Then we will have the October reviews. However, and I did some, you know, figuring out and some homework regarding the 60th special anniversary specials. And I have found that the first one is airing. November 1st, which is a Wednesday. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but that's what I found. And then the second one is airing November 17th. And then the third one is airing November 23rd, which is a Thursday. And I do believe that the November 23rd is the only one that really has a definitive date. But in doing so... Because I heard November 4th. I didn't because uh, I heard November fourth, not the first. The first hmm. was, the first was definitely the uh, all the Doctor Who content being dropped on iPlayer and Disney Plus and all that. But I mm-hmm. wasn't aware that that was the potential for the first date of the first special too. So, okay. So, it has been confirmed in DWM that the first is not the date that the first special is going to be aired. Russell T Davis has said that. He said. Keep an eye out for three key dates. And those dates are November the 1st, November the 11th, and November the 25th. As well as, obviously, November the 23rd being the anniversary. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, so- November, the, November the 1st, we know the David Tennant specials are going to be airing on BBC4. Not the actual episodes, but the documentary specials. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
That's going to be good. Classic Doctor Who is coming to BBC iPlayer. Nothing about Disney Plus. It's not going to Disney Plus. Get that out of your head. It's not coming. Isn't it? Only iPlayer. Oh, okay. The specials are going to be aired on Disney Plus, but the classic series isn't. Yeah, because it's on, oh, uh, what's it called? Okay. The, uh, the Britbox. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Okay. Now, we know that on the first, we are going to be getting over 800 episodes, not including An Unearthly Child. Yet. Which is a okay. killer well, fish in its own yeah. right. Pose rant it, it for is, later. Yeah. Pose rant, yeah. That will be one later. I don't think RTD would want it airing on a weekday. No. I think sense. we're going to go back to Saturday. So here's I, what I you have. know what I can see? Uh, I, I can see it basically going to be the three three Saturdays over, no, uh, over November, honestly. Yeah. So here's what I have. So this is from the direct website and it says quoting rtd dates to look out for november 1st november 17th november 23rd and none of the specials is the date uh, or sir and none of those is the date of the specials so it is assumed oh. kind of like what you said it's going to be on a weekend so the direct is presuming november 11th for the first special, November 18th for the second special, and November 25th for the third special. So that's that's what it's looking at. So at least, so, and just to throw this I out there then. for future podcasts, is that this is the we will be reviewing these, and I would love for them to come out on Saturday, which means that we would be able to record our fresh reactions on Sunday, and then our... That podcast would not be posted until a week later, so we will be one week behind. But that gives us three podcasts for the month of November. So at least, uh, you know, obviously, the month from hell uh, would be something that we would have to be looking at a tad bit later on in the year at, for per <laughs> those dates. And so I would also like to say that as... If we can, and again, I understand schedules and conflicts or whatever, next week do the October reviews, which will then be released on November 5th of this year. Then we would have three specials pushing back either the month from hell, the second week of December or third week from December, because again, somewhere in there, we would be doing our... um reviews for november uh, th that's just kind yeah. of what i have yeah. figured out what are your thoughts i think that's two a solid things. solid byline yeah two things uh firstly so if those dates then that <clears throat> were mentioned in the direct so is that, is that magazine direct or yeah or am i getting that's confused what, that's what the website's called the direct oh i've never heard of that website at all the direct.com um, no i've never heard of it Interesting. So if those dates then that are posed are not the dates for the specials, what do you think the, what did you say, the 17th and the 25th? The 11th, the 18th, and the 25th. Uh, no, 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 no. So the 7th is, 7th is a Friday, 17th okay. is a Friday. Yeah. Which it was 11th, dates. 18th, 25th, it... all Saturday. That is the assumed... Right. You're wondering what's going to be announced on them. That's what uh, I mean, yeah. yeah. That those those so... two... Because obviously the first is... Because obviously the first of November is when all the classic Doctor Who is going to be dropped on iPlayer. Mm -hmm. so that's obvious. So that's, that's one date that's obviously... But the, but the second two, I'm wondering... So I'm they, going to what, assume what because planned? I've been re-listening to uh, some of our podcasts to create the best of which will be coming out sometime in December and something that Legion said somewhere in 2023 was the belief that there will be there has been found an lost episode and I believe your assumption because there was a tease for something to be revealed or released in the month of July that's what would happen 
It did not happen. However, what are your thoughts on the reveal of a lost episode coming November 23rd, being the 60th anniversary of the show? Please let it be Marco Polo. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I would have assumed that you would have liked uh, Space Pirates. Come on. No, 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 no. Argon. No, I want that animated because I think animation will do that justice, whereas yeah. I think studio will not. Yeah. No, no. Let's face it. <laughs> yeah, Marco I'm, Polo. You know, Marco Polo, I think, would, would, would be nice to see in studio. No. It's the same as I know, the, the I know your guys. Your guy's opinion of Marco Polo. And I, I re listened to it last year. Or was it earlier this year? I no, I no, and I can't I comment because I've enjoyed not, it. I've not fully I've not fully listened to it, so I can't comment on it. So I um, which listen which, to it. Which which no 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 because because again brings me on to our um Kay. you mentioned about content going into into December, but um I had an epiphany which I put to Legion first and then obviously dropped to you guys on, on the group. So I did ask uh, him if it hurt. I don't uh, I don't know if you want to do that now or do that later. I don't know Brett, what your epiphany so is cuz I Liam's either pregnant. don't recall it or congratulations. <laughs> Where's my millions? No, uh, the epiphany that I had was me and Legion review and basically do the entirety Oh, uh, I had no idea that was an epiphany. Rewatch. I just that was a proposal. Yes. So that wasn't a I did not see that as an epiphany. I'm totally fine with it. I told you that I don't have the time and here's my okay. my here's my pushback on why I don't want to be a part of it is because first off it is done through AD some of these episodes mm -hmm. you have never seen before and when I do a massive review, I do notes, I do breakdowns, I do this, and I feel as though I would be getting in your way also. Yeah, no, I get that. I, I, I said this to uh, Liam, actually, and I, I think this would work me and him. It just means I'm going to have to put some more work in than I normally would. <laughs> but <laughs> Indeed. Uh, Indeed. I, like, I think... Wait, wait, I like wait, 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 what never you stepped up into saying that he was going to add in know, some more work. I know. You know, like, it it took saying? him a couple of minutes there to go, yeah, yeah, you will. Wait. Screw you. Hang like, on. <laughs> but uh, I, like, I've seen 95% of Classic Who. I think there's only a couple of stories that I've not seen. Mm -hmm. But I th do think that going through from the start, sort of doing a... <laughs> Running Down Corridors, which was Toby Haydock and Rob Sherman's project. Mm -hmm. Or The Wife in Space. Yeah, 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 yeah. Doing that, but from an audio-described perspective, I think it's going to be really, really interesting. I, I know. A Journey into Sound it's... and Space. Ooh. 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 Nice. Now, if we can stick to this, mm -hmm. and if we can do... Even if it's just a fifteen-minute episode a week, yeah, that is going to be content for years. Yeah, at least a hundred and fifty-nine weeks. Oh yeah. Well, I would very, very strongly suggest not doing an entire story in one day. So wait, mm. are are you saying that when it gets to the cliffhanger, stop and then come back to it the next day? Yes. Ooh. You think? Liam won't be able to do that. Yes. <laughs> because <laughs> so Marco Polo as a story is a slog if you do mm -hmm. all seven episodes in one go. Oh, maybe that's However, the way to do it, yeah. I spread it, I think I spread it over about three weeks. Really? You know, just listening to an episode here and there. And the appreciation I got for that story was so much more than if I'd just gone boom, boom. Because, mm. you know, because you're not of all the having dear to diary type stuff that was constantly. Because I think oh, that that is the yeah. hard part about the Marco Polo is, dear diary, today the doctor was a jerk to yes. me. Yes, no, I get that. But mm. so, 
rather than you, you're not going to be dedicating an hour and a half to, you know, in some places four hours, Dalek's master plan looking at you. You're not going to be dedicating yeah, that. Let's be that one. Be the one that's found. Oh, that would be good, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. But we're going to be dedicating if we dedicate half an hour a day, and then we come together on, well, whatever day suits us best, right? And we record just a little bit, basically. I go, well, this, I think this is this is this and this, and Liam's like, well, I can't remember it. Did I watch it? Shut up, Legion. <laughs> Ah, uh, I'm sure you'll get that eventually. I know I'll get that. I'll get it in like week one. Good. Um, but I mean, I don't know because I think it would be it would, it would be nice to review an, uh, an entire story. But I mean, I also see what you're saying. I think if we're going to do this, we do the stories justice, and the story sure. doesn't get just. It's a serialized story. It's not an omnibus story, mm. and you are going to get some stories where you know if you can take a bite out of it for 20 minutes you're going to be more engaged than if you were stuck yeah doing it for the the entire length like Mm. there's some absolute dross there is there is time in the rani i'm looking at you you can slip through Mm. that one if you want i would rather do time in the rani than delta and the bannerman i hate delta and the bannerman so much no, apparently there's a load of lesbian subcontext in that. Hmm. There is, there is, and I, I really like the Welsh companion. Yeah, good for you. Or just the person who was going to be the Welsh companion, Delta. I'm glad that you like that story. Mm. Mm. Um, I I don't know. I think I think it will depend on the story. Honestly, I think sometimes I think we we might be able to do a story in one go, depending on what it is. But I think other stories, yeah, definitely break it down. Maybe do it in chunks, maybe a couple of podcasts, or you know, week by week, yeah. depending. Here's something I would like to pose to any of the listeners of the podcast. Again, email the show at alambraaudio at gmail.com. Tweet the show at Alambra Podcast. DMs are open because I have noticed the uh, listening figures have dropped significantly. And I do know that at certain points in time, they go up. And then they go down. I know February is generally not a high listen month. People are just making out during that month. But, uh, good for them. You know, in Lucky m- May, June, and July, we were up around 1,300 downloads. And currently wow. we are around 400. And so the Gosh. question that I like to pose, because, you know, I am listening and we will. You know, we're still going to do the podcast that we want to do, but we also want it to be enjoyable for the listener. So the question that I pose is we have constantly for at least four or five episodes kind of trashed Doomsday. And maybe we're... um, So is everybody else, let's be honest? Exactly. But (laughs) the main reason why I I pose that is, you know... I, I was listening to a couple of other Doctor Who fan uh, podcasts and everything is positive. Everything is good. Everything is great. Even, you know, all of the worst parts of the Chibnall era, according to them, were not that bad. And so I pose the question to the listeners. Oof. Like, I, I like I like saying and stating things exactly as they are. I don't think I don't like to be phony. I don't like pulling punches. But maybe, perhaps, we get a little curmudgeon And so the question I pose to the listeners is, what aspects of the podcast do you like? What a- aspects of the podcast do you think we could improve and or change? Just because, again, I, I'm not going back to the time where me and Liam were trying to get Big Finish to give us the releases that we paid for early that we're never going to do that again that was that was phony like i'm huh. a, unless i get a paycheck from big finish with a number between 1 and 9 with five zeros behind it i will not be phony i do have a selling point though where i can be phony 
So just also throwing that out to you, Big Finish, too. Cha-ching. Money, money, money. <laughs> Which, by the way, speaking of Doomsday, have you uh, read the um, final bit of Doomsday? No. At all. I don't think anybody has, have they? Well, I think one person has. Uh, I can't remember who it was who I was uh, watching. Oh, I think it was that Richard, uh, the, the, uh, blah, blah, the the channel that I was talking about earlier on, on the podcast. Oh, uh, fairies. On, yeah, air. yeah. I bet you he no, wrote no, that. No, no, yeah. no. Nope, nope. Someone different, actually. And, yeah, it's just a bit of a, bit of a damp squib. It That's just basically, what these events are. It, it basically ends where it began. She goes back to to Venice or wherever it was, New Venice or whatever. And guess who the villain is? Uh, she's the villain. Well, I mean, she is, but she's not the. But apparently, but she's she, she's not the villain. It's that annoying Terry, New York, oh, New Jersey. You've person. got to freaking she, be she, kidding oh. me. The one who yeah, has a worse and, American and, accent than me. Yes, yes, that. And basically the reason the whole death thing was following her was because of the, basically she's an, an anomaly and it's kind of like the whole Reapers thing and that's what caused that. And, and yeah, I, 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 I just wish that she would have failed, actually. Honestly, it, it would have been a lot cooler. The one good thing we can say about the doomsday event is can can anybody guess where i'm going with this yes i'm actually genuinely is, serious it's over yes yes the one good thing is is that it is over and the bbc definitely now know that it is a uh, a project in diminishing returns and they will never ever do a multimedia crossover event again because it's the second time that, this, that they've done this and this is the second time people have gone eh meh so hopefully I'm laugh my ass off if on november the 23rd they go hey guys doomsday 2 it's a crossover event well you know <laughs> again I- i've said this before i will say it again i have no problem with a crossover event here again here's what they need to do let's just say judy Gatwa's 15th doctor has a story adventure then on new comic book day that wednesday release a comic with the 15th doctor doing something and then the following week make reference to said thing that is not mandatory for anybody to purchase to understand the next episode but just an extra adventure then in between that episode and the following episode, have Big Finish release on someday that week, probably way before that Saturday or Sunday, what if whatever they decide to release episodes, release it midweek or early week with an event with that won't feature Shooty Gatwa, but will feature a doctor doing something, coming across a villain that the 15th Doctor the following week will visit and a reference will be made, not mandatory to understand the entirety of the whole thing, but a fun side adventure that connects multimedia things. That's how you do a crossover event. Don't make it mandatory. Make it extra. As a fun A-side, they did this in Series 1. Back in the days of Chris Eccleston. Oh, yeah? Because in Boomtown, they mention they've been somewhere. And then Series 1 ended, and the novel came out that they referenced. Oh, that's cool. What was the, what yeah. was the novel? I think it was something inside. Hmm. Huh. That's um, cool. interesting. But back, back to my original point. What good thing has Doomsday given us? And it is, it's a genuine, it's a good thing. Uh, fans coming together, uh, hating every single thing um, as a collective? No, that's that's not a good thing. No, I think okay. it is. I think when, because here's the, here's the, here's 
I will defend that. Because... Uh, no, actually, no. Y- you are right to a point. Okay. There is creative disdain. And then there is the hatred that I've seen from the fandom in the past week. Well, oh, okay. I mean, this is the fandom, and the fandom is always going to be, you know, like, the, they can always do one worse, right? Like, Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they can they can make you feel really good one day, and then they can just really disappoint you the next. But no, yeah. the hatred like kids- is not not the good point that, that Doomsday has given us. Okay. So... What is, um, what, what is be, yeah? What is b- besides it, it ending I... and the mutual hatred for this, and maybe the BBC learning their lesson? I don't know. So you're going to have to share. I am. Yeah, I know. We got one more Eighth Doctor and Charlie story. We did, but whether it's any good, I don't know. But that's a really good pairing. It it is. Um... Yeah. Neither of you guys believe me. I, I, <laughs> no, I, no, no, no. I believe you. I, I, I just, I just. That means we've got to listen to the three preceding stories, and I, I, and I, I, I don't know about you, but I, I, I've got nothing against Camille Cadori. I, I just get just getting a bit fed up with Jackie Tyler at the minute. Hmm. Just as a character. It's like me and Alison Hammond. What about her? Ooh. She's everywhere. Well, yeah. I'm sure she's a lovely lady. But, yeah. you know, she's hosting this morning. She's she's taken over from Matt Lucas on Bake Off. Uh, she's just everywhere. Oh, I'm so glad. Oh, I did not watch the last season of Bake Off because I cannot stand Matt Lucas. And when I looked at, I started watching episode 11, I was like... My prayers have been answered. Thank you so much. <laughs> so happy. Uh, uh. Uh, dear. I like oh. Matt Lucas. I prefer Matt Lucas to Alison Hamm. Like I say, I'm sure she's a lovely lady, but she's everywhere mm. in the UK mm. at the moment. Yeah, she is. Yeah, she is. So the reason why I stayed silent, because I am I was weighing what you were saying with what I, you know, the dread of doomsday and here's where i will lie because this is i i thoroughly thought about this while you guys were talking about this and that and not matt lucas being on bake off which is a treat for the whole world and what i think is yes we got the eighth Dar- eighth doctor and charlie back together again which is a wonderful thing however that adventure is being held hostage by a unnecessary, unwanted crossover that I, and again, on Big Finish's page, I did not, did not, FYI, get blocked by them. They, a week ago, posted, somebody posted something on uh, one of their forums revolving around Doomsday, and I replied to the person who posted saying the trailer should have sold the event. It didn't. The free hour, one hour story should have helped sell the event more. It didn't. Two three ninety nine comics should have helped. I found that they still they didn't. didn't. Big Finished was doomed from the very beginning because of the huh, price tag associated with doomsday they they were and also get this they then were like you can was it get it for free in a doctor who magazine or something like that or no 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 you could win it as a as a competition and can i just say the (laughs) comments on that facebook post are beautiful i know we're slating off slating off doomsday again well and Actually, that is actually where I posted that <laughs> comment right there. Because, yeah, you tipped us uh, off to that. And I was just like, you know what? I'm not a poster. But you know what? Ever since I got kicked off for a smiley face emoji, maybe I might add a couple things here or there. Yeah. Oh, sorry. It was Laffy just face emoji. some of the anyway. comments. Just beautiful. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. 
pure gold, pure gold. And and that's what I mean. The problem is, is like it wasn't, you know, well, it wasn't their fault. It wasn't the actor's fault. It was just a no, terrible it just idea. Wasn't good. Yeah, it's no. not Big Finish's fault. No. They're they're trying to no. reclaim some of the money that they spent, and you know, <laughs> <laughs> they're not going to reclaim it. So let's transition from that to the Stephen Coben or whatever unearthly child. Yeah, whatever. Rant that right. I currently just one second. I currently have no opinion on. However, your both of you have opinions, and therefore I might do. have a p- opinion because of your opinion, or I might just end up with the whole thing. Still have no opinion. So, um, both of you are going to be going, and Legion is has been ready to go. Since this morning. So, Liam, Legion, ready, set, rant. Right. So, this needs some subcontext. Or just some context, really. I don't know if you guys remember, a decade ago, Steph Coburn decided he was going to take the BBC to court over the name TARDIS, which he failed at spectacularly. He lost because he basically said his dad, Anthony Coburn, who wrote An Unearthly Child and the following three episodes, 1000 BC or 10,000 BC, whatever it's called, um, he basically created the term TARDIS and it belonged to the family Coburn. Now, that's rubbish. He thoroughly got his ass handed to him by the BBC, who won in court, and... 10 years later, he's trying a very similar thing. But he's gone at it a slightly different way. He's used Twitter. He is no longer saying that his... Well, he is still saying that his father created the term TARDIS and is basically the, the, the god that created it all. When actually, the original story, Coburn rewrote the C.T. Weber script and... Yeah, yeah. Whereas Hussein actually rewrote Coburn's script. Mm-hmm. But he is now basically saying that he has withdrawn the rights for an unearthly child from the BBC. Out of spite and vengeance. Completely because. out of spite. B- b- because, wait, because... Wait, no, no, no. Oh, I'm because. going to get to it. Okay. Completely, like Liam says, out of spite and out of vengeance, because he was offered twenty thousand pounds by the BBC to renew the digital rights for streaming, which he refused. Now, to the best of our knowledge, it is just the streaming rights. It doesn't relate to physical media releases. Which. Which also, by the way, the £20,000 cap, by the way, <clears throat> he was offered, is the top offer the BBC could offer anyway, because there's a limit to how much they can offer writers and the writers' families and stuff and the like for, for rights anyway on, on, on media yes. and on scripts and things. So, and to be fair, he said this, in his, uh, said this himself in tweets. He is flat broke, right? <laughs> He bought so twenty grand. A he bought a recording and studio. Be, and let's be honest, twenty grand is a massive amount of money. You know, just to get a check for twenty grand in one go, like you know that that's an, an incredible amount, amount of money. And let's face it, probably a bit more than some people get in a year salary. So you know, I don't think that's particularly unreasonable. <laughs> Also, to give some more context to this, um, which we will I'll also get onto other sort of thoughts about the fans and, and such further down the line. But I mean, he is a complete Fruit Loop, and by all accounts, a really horrible human being in the sense of the comments he's posted about the current era of up and coming Doctor Who, especially towards black actors, drag queens, trans people, etc. And again, this is probably a load of baloney, but he was threatening that if anything happened to him, he would apparently 
give the rights to an unearthly child to the Russian Federation? So rumblings were happening in the fandom a few weeks back basically saying that an unearthly child isn't going to be part of these massive wadge of episodes that are going to be on BBC iPlayer. This is when Steph Coburn started doing his Professor Zaroff all over Twitter. And he is a very disturbed gentleman if you read his tweets alone. You are absolutely right. When he dies, he has basically said, that the rights for broadcast for an unearthly child are going to the Russian Federation. Which is ridiculous. Now, Why? Do you know what the Russian right? Federation Ru- will do? No, no, no. Do you know what the it. Russian Federation will do? I don't know what they're going to do. They, they'll, be, they'll be like, thank you. Thank you, Comrade Coburn. Hello there, British Broadcasting Corporation. Can we have 20,000 monies? Well, yeah, and, and the they'll rest. Go, well, yes, of course you can. Here you go. <laughs> but... but- I mean, it's just it's just nuts. Like, uh, and also, what the hell would the Russians want to do with four with episodes of a British TV show? Like, mm-hmm. come on. So, back to the main thread of the story. The rumblings started in the fandom, which naturally riled up the octogenarians of the, of the fans Doctor Who? himself, Se- yeah. septuagenarian. Queen of the fans himself, Ian Levine, who has basically decided between him and his cronies, who, I don't know if you follow the Ian Levine group, but his particular cronies are flipping nuts. They are more than foul. You give an opinion and you give a balanced opinion and your name gets dragged through the mud by that little cadre. It's a really disgusting side of the fandom. But... Back to my point, Ian Levine's now up in arms. So he's got all of his cronies to go after Steph Coburn on Twitter because, you know, they're all in their late 60s, early 70s, and that's what you do when you're grown-ups. You know, you you start a Twitter war, which Mm. has driven an already mentally unstable man who is... Yes, being very childish when it comes to rights over something and money Mm -hmm. to go even more OTT. It gets worse. So no amount of people can go to Ian Levine and his cadre. Stop this. The BBC's not commented on it. It is in the BBC's hands. They will sort it. He'll calm down in the new year when he realises you can't pressure people like last time. They'll pay him, we'll get the episodes back. And even if we don't, we'll get them on Blu-ray. Oh no, that's not good enough for good old Levine. He has basically said, we need to get in contact with family members of Coburn to get the rights off Coburn, and they need to fight him for the rights. He has published the names, and because he can't find them, the addresses, uh, because he can't find the addresses, the locations where they were last known to be, of Coburn's sisters. Now, unfortunately, one of his sisters has died and his other sister is very handicapped and has no interest in dealing no. with Anthony Coburn's estate. Of course not, no. But the fact no, and, and, and that, and, and that, that they that have published... Is, that is just crazy as well. I mean, that, I mean, that's it's, just out-and-out out stalking. It's illegal. Yeah. They've published well, I mean, somebody's name without their consent online. Mm. Mm-hmm. And basically said, he's literally said, can somebody find where they live for me, but don't <laughs> contact them. Give me their personal details so that I can contact them. Wow. Wow. This is insane. And, it's, and I, I very much put a hot take, and my name is now Mud in that group. I literally put, I, yes, I know it's historically relevant, but I mean, let's be perfectly honest, it's not a very good story anyway. <laughs> sure, As sure. A, uh, Yep, at, which should be agreed, it's not, but uh, whatever. It's dire. It's dreadful. But I was like, come on, guys. Yes, I know it's historically relevant. They will They will sort it. Just give them time. But it's not a very good story. And my name is now Mud. Of course, hmm. of course it is, because you've I've been got called all argument. the names under the sun. And you know what you like? It's a TV show, guys. Chill out. And But also, yeah. ironically, though, right? For all the um, issues surrounding getting the streaming rights, apparently sales of an earthly child have gone up. 
on DVD. Yeah. Because people, yeah, yeah. have, have have. people have been panic buying, since, you know, like it was 2020 again. It's just they've been panic yeah, buying an actual child, not, not bog roll. So Amazon UK and HMV are out of stock of an unearthly child on DVD. <laughs> Which is just nuts. Um, <clears throat> also, to add to the Coburn story, apparently I heard today that he has been in talks again with the BBC uh, with his lawyer, apparently. They're not sure oh. what the deal is, but uh, apparently the, his lawyer is now talking to the BBC. So... Well, that's going to cost him a fair packet because he's... he's yeah, of course it is. Piss poor as it is, yeah. he bought a recording studio on the proceeds of the streaming rights for an unearthly child that he hadn't been paid or agreed to he bought a 50 grand recording studio because that's what he was expecting to be paid. And the BBC went, this is the top fee. This is what all writers get um, from media from the sixties. And he was like, okay, I'll, I'll request you to, um, to destroy all the master copies. And they went, you don't own the master copies. We do. <laughs> yeah. So you own the streaming rights and you own the rights for broadcast, but you don't own them. We do. And so now, so yeah, so you own the streaming rights and basically you, you're you now withholding those streaming rights so you're not going to get any more money from the streaming rights so you've shot yourself in the foot there, mate. Just saying that you could have got money for. <laughs> he did it 10 years ago. He failed. He's done it now. He's going to fail. He'll do it in 10 years if he's still alive. But yeah, so ends... So ends the slightly nonsensical rant about how Doctor Who fans are vile and they're chasing a man over rights that he does actually have the right to refuse, even though he's refusing them over a very petty reason. The fact that he oh, hates and the, the also <clears throat> yeah, he hates, he hates sorry, and also he hates BBC because he claims that the BBC killed his dad, um, which you know is a little bit yeah, like. Sorry, but ridiculous. Yeah, but it's 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 a sad and sorry state of affairs where fans are very much making the situation worse. Oh, completely. Uh, yeah, totally. Which is and it's what Doctor Who and Star shame. Wars fans do best. Yeah, it's it's and and I think like I think this is partially why I I kind of had sort of the thoughts of okay, let's me and you do a rewatch of classic Doctor Who because. I kind of want to watch it with fresh eyes and appreciate, you know, it for what it is. Yeah. So that was my kind of thought process behind that. It's fair. But no, it's... Uh, I think we just need to watch this space where an unearthly child is concerned. Mm. But mm. from what I understand, it only affects the streaming rights, not the broadcast rights, which is a whole kettle of fish in itself. So the rumour is they've colourised an unearthly child for the 60th anniversary. If it is the case and it doesn't affect the broadcast rights, mm. we will still be able to watch it live on the BBC. Will that then come to iPlayer? I guess it won't come to iPlayer no. after they will it? Oh, that's really annoying. So Liam, break out your VCR. Yeah, I don't have one. But... Oh. Mm. Liam? Breakout audio hijack. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'd have to figure out figure out how to do that on the uh, on. Um... Oh, it's really easy. If you watch no, I mean... Safari, you literally just record. Oh yeah, I know, but I mean, like, we we have to figure that out if they do decide to drop it with AD live and all that mm. and, and stuff. Um, yeah, Brett, what are your thoughts on the whole situation? Then, seeing as we've now he has none, he's been silent. Uh, I don't care. True. Like every single thing that you're talking about, I'm like, I actually don't care. Like, I take take well, an unearthly child. I don't care. Like, it changes my life zero. Take I, that I, and give us back I Alex own, Master Plan. I own accidentally two copies of that. Like, good. M make sure that nobody can uh, buy them. And then my uh, my sealed copy that I accidentally purchased that I've been trying to figure out what to do with for years. Um, 
will be worth a lot more money. Good. I, it I, is. I don't Genuinely, care. look at the prices on eBay now. <laughs> there are scalpers out there. There was one on eBay the other day for £100. Wow. All right. But, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just, we can move on now. It's just, it's a sad, it's a sad state of affairs where fans have shown their true colours and become a bit psychotic again. And it's not even the younger fans, it's the older fans who should know better. Well, and you'd think as well, right, being an older fan, that they would appreciate it more because it was like their era in the first place. Uh, You say that, and then there's a whole bunch of older fans that are actually do own, and I did read an article that the BBC knows where every secret or private collector has and what they have in their private collection. And... Because the concern about it is, is these older fans, and some of them aren't even Doctor Who fans, they just know that they have something and they want to own it knowing that nobody else has it. And the concern is that this these films are going to deteriorate because they're not being taken care of. And so by the time these mm. people die, the worry is when they die the relatives will be like, well, we don't care about this garbage. Or maybe they'll sell them back to the BBC or maybe they'll just hold them hostage for even longer. Like that is actually Mm. out of any situation regarding an episode, that is the only thing that I care about is the lost episodes that people have in their collection who rightly or wrongly so, because I know that some of them, uh, when they quit the BBC, and, you know, they were getting ready to wheel off some of these episodes to the bin or to be torched or whatever. We're like, you know what, I'm going to keep these and just wheeled them off to their car instead. So people know that these things do exist. However, the concern that I have for any of these stuff is, you know, what is going to happen when these private collectors eventually die? Will the care and compassion to mm. the f- We, the fans, uh, we, we get that, like who in their family will care that, you know, episode one of, you know, uh, the Daleks master plan or episode four of the 10th planet, who will care enough to see that this makes it back to the BBC archives? That Mm -hmm. is it. Uh, And. Yeah, You've got the family members of these people and you've even got some of these people that are looking at Twitter and they're looking at how, I mean, whether he deserves it or not, how vilified Steph Coburn is being. And they're going to be like, well, no, I don't want to give these back to these ungrateful people. Mm. Ian Levine, yes, we do need to thank him for a lot of things. He's recovered a lot of episodes. It's thanks to him that the archiving has begun. But the last time he found anything was in the very late 80s, nearly 40 years ago. Hmm. Yeah. You know, exactly. since then it's been other people and he's been other riding people. on that Mark high. Ayer, you know, Marquez. No, Marquez uh, has never found anything. No, Philip Morris. Marquez well, is well, a sound well, editor. Well, sure, but I mean, he did do restoration on stuff, so you can kind of say that. That's all he, he does, anything. though. That's his job. Sure. He's a sound but editor. Without, he restores sure. things. But But without that restoration, though, like... Oh, without well, that uh, restoration, yes. Yeah, without no, the as- yeah. restoration, but, the- but that that's his job. That'd be like, thank you mm. uh, for, you know, going to work today, Mark. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I was going to say, you know, thanks to people, people like Mark Ayer, Simon Guerrier, um, uh, Mar- uh, Philip Morris, etc. You know, we wouldn't have what we have. This is another one who's been vilified, M- you know. Philip Morris. Uh, Philip Morris has gone, yes, there are more episodes. Yes, I'm trying to get hold of them. And everyone's like, oh, no, you're a liar. You're, a, you know, you're doing this. You're holding them from the fans. Blah, 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 blah. You're a monster. And he's like, no, I'm not. There are more episodes, but I can only do so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, I guess with that, um, I do want to get to one Big Finish thing, which popped up on the Big Finish audio group because I haven't been kicked off of that, even though I have used the laugh of this hey, emoji. Well so, you. I mean, you know, mm. s- some admin have th- thicker skin than others, but uh, clearly it was brought up that, and I don't know if you guys noticed it, but the Eighth Doctor 
one of his releases got pushed all the way to November of 2024. Which one? It was... Uh, no, what was the release? The The next Time War 8th Doctor uh, release. It was supposed to come out, I think, in either March or April of this of this upcoming year. And Ooh. what they did was, according to the people on the group, is they pushed the 8th Doctor back all the way to November of 2024, and then they brought up a different Eighth Doctor story. I'm trying to find out where it was because I, I saw it the other day. Oh, they brought another one all the way back f- from like November and is going to release it in May of 2024. So I'm it, it huh. kind it's kind of huh. interesting because the only rationale I could think of is maybe there's something new series surrounding the time war that is going on that required that episode to either be redone and re partially re-recorded or, you know, maybe I, I, I can't say that maybe, you know, they've taken things and you know it's not ready or they haven't done things because big finish generally does things at least six months plus i think the most rushed release that they've ever done was the lockdown fourth doctor story like i think that was the yeah that was like a month turnaround wasn't yeah. it it was and it was actually a really good story it was a good story well. mm. and so i the only thing that you could say is, well, maybe they hadn't recorded it. Well, if they hadn't recorded it, why was it going to be released like in March of 2024 as we are, you know, about five months out and yet we're still getting an eighth doctor. So you can either say somebody who was cast is no longer available at the time, or perhaps since it is a war doctor box set or not an a war doctor, but a time war box set, perhaps Something that RTD is doing required the script to be redone, re-edited, and then some of it being re-recorded. I don't know. That's just something I thought. The, the, eighth, the eighth Doctor meets the Sasha Dewan Master. Oh, please no. Please no. <laughs> I, st- I still like Sasha Dewan as the Master. Uh, I, I, I'm glad you like him as the Master. I, Thank you. Yeah. I, I really like to hear the box sets that we've paid for with Sasha as the master. Uh, well, I mean, I think this is going to be the next uh, Jekyll and Hyde um, debacle. So, um, uh, transference, uh, not transference, the human frontier. Oh, the human frontier. That's, That's been pushed serious, back again, isn't it? That, again. To another, yeah, one year later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Meant to be out next year. It's now in 2025. Yeah. So wow. you can guarantee Charlotte Pollard Series 3, 2030. 2030? Is that soon? I mean, at least they've not put that out for pre-order. That's true. Well, I mean, that's actually, no, that's not good, actually, because it means it's not even been, not even been considered. And speaking of the Eighth Doctor, that was the thing I, I wanted to uh, to raise. They're doing the uh, the box sets of the Lucy Miller stuff, you know, as, as sets. Yeah, now. I saw that. Do you think have they done more? They w- no, no, just season no, no, one. No, 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 no. That that they're like they're they're re-releasing it. You know, rather than having individual releases, they're they're releasing it as seasons, mm. like like so, like a box set. Yeah, I um, saw I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Do you think uh, for series four they will include an earthly child in there or not? I think so. Yes. Yeah, I hope so. Why wouldn't they? I mean, I think it's well. I mean, Lucy is not. I mean, Lucy isn't in that story. But however, it does slot between the death and Blackpool and Situation Vacant. Though. Well, yeah, but so. still, she's not in a good majority of Series Four. So, I mean, true. I, I, I mean, the but. only thing that I could like, I disagree with Big Finish doing is entitling it the Eighth Doctor and Lucy Miller series. I mean, I think it should be the Adventures of the Eighth Doctor, and because again. In series four, I've never been pro Lucy Miller. I did like 
the uh, companion, I can't think of what her name is. You're going to have to remind me. Tamsin. Yeah, Tamsin. Tamsin. I Played liked by her. I really Nikki thought Wally. she was a great actress. And and not only she a was. great actress, but she also was a great character too. Yes. Mm-hmm. She was in your favorite Fifth Doctor episode not long ago. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Resistor. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. Mm. Forgettable. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, no, I mean, well, no, because... It is L- L- Lucy Miller because obviously she was in the fr- in the, the previous three series. Yeah, and well, I mean she was in and 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 to be fair, she was in the set from story four onwards. So well, yeah, but I mean again, be that she wasn't in. <laughs> uh, he, you know? So here, just one second. Here's the interesting thing about the whole uh, situation is you have, and I think and. I, I would love it if Liam did this because I would like laugh hysterically at least for a good half hour, have the best ab exercise in the entire world because currently what some of you know Marvel and DC is doing, like uh, for example, DC uh, upcoming, they have released in years past the Justice League of America written by Graham, uh, Grant Morrison on the bus. Now, he didn't he wrote like a large chunk of the justice league of america about 50 60 issues or whatever that thing is about 1200 pages in a, it is a massive thing you drop that on your foot you're breaking a couple of toes however what they're doing now is now they're releasing the justice league of america starting from issue 1 of grant morrison going all the way to issue 16 in a larger or a smaller, but like 300 chunk. They're not calling it written by Grant Morrison because there are other writers that jumped in, in between, uh, you know, a mini arc or something like that. So I would love it. And then laugh hysterically. If big finish did these omnibuses, eighth doctor and Lucy Miller and then do, and then eventually, when it comes to series four, release it in two different snippets. One snippet being the Eighth Doctor and uh, what's her face, and then the Eighth Doctor and Lucy Miller, and then come back and then release it as one big gigantic omnibus. I would laugh hysterically if you owned all three of those. You mean well. I mean, you will. That, that that noise right there basically tells you that if they do that, Liam will do that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, what do they say about us Doctor Who fans? We're completionists. Leave me alone. We like to double dip. Uh, yeah. Triple dip. You, you can't dip. talk. How many copies of six the Five Shard Doctors of, do you have, six, Brett? S- yeah, six One. Shada Brett release. I don't know. There's, uh, I don't know if you follow him on YouTube. A uh, chap called From the Archives, mm-hmm. and he's just released a special on the media releases of The Five Doctors. Mm. I'm 45 minutes into it. I've got 45 minutes to go. So far, it's wow. glorious. You know, and here's an interesting thing. I think that the future of entertainment is actually going to be revolving around YouTube. Like, you have these people yes. that go in-depth do so much not just cursory research but like in-depth research studies you know they have patreons they have people who can send them money from time to time and i i tell you these youtubers or whatever i think in the near future youtubers will be able to make or break a movie a franchise or whatnot because there's going to be so much steam revolving around them. Because I was listening to um, uh, the uh, what was his name, um, Frank, uh, not Frank Gore, um, whatever. Um, excellent, Chris, uh, cool. Chris Gore. Yeah, thank you. And I was listening to him because he was talking about how different the streaming networks approach to TV is compared to the standard networks and also HBO. And it's really quite interesting because, and he gave HBO as an example, but he also said that, you know, the, you know, most of the basic networks work the same way is 
HBO has an unaired episode one of Game of Thrones with completely different actors cast as parts. And the execs watched it because, again, your your pilot episode was your pitch to sell the, the series. And mm. this the execs for HBO saw that, said, we don't like a lot of this, recast all these people, but we do think that there's good value here. Whereas sometimes like the pilot's just like, okay, well, that sucks. And thank you for showing it to us. This will never be made ever. Whereas Netflix, you, uh, Disney Plus, and a whole you, bunch Wolf. of other streaming services will, they just, somebody pitches an idea, they go, okay, do that. And then they record, they mm. write it, record it. There is no showrunner for the series. And then they just drop it. And yeah. I think they've... They've just come out, haven't they? And they basically said, "Yeah, we're going to have to get, we're going to go to showrunners now, mm-hmm. Disney Plus." Yeah, which have is really, yeah, mm-hmm. which is really quite interesting because, you know, the the first person that is kind of being working with Disney Plus who has showrunning experience is a Welsh man with the initials R T N D. I mean, he is. Uh, you can also argue that. Dave Filoni and um, ah, however, yes, you could argue that. However, they do not have the specific role of showrunner. Not yet, anyway. Creative control comes down to Lucasfilm, not mm. just them. Whereas showrunner Mr. RTD has creative control do you think uh do you he can literally because of his deal just just let me finish Mm. because of his deal that he made with the bbc he has to give the bbc the storyline and they can basically go yeah okay we like that or we don't but they cannot stop him because he has full creative control do you think dave feloni will get creative control of um lucasfilm star wars going forward I don't know. Not it until de- Lord Voldemort. Yeah, I was going to say, it depends on uh, Miss mm. uh, KK. If uh... I don't know. I would like to see uh, that happen, though, for Dave Filoni to, to be showrunner, but then also to have more writers who know, you know, the the world and, well, and, and all y- that. It, it's it, here, Here's the interesting thing. So, again, another thing Chris Gore was talking about was revolving around the first Disney Plus Daredevil series where uh, show ru- er, <laughs> writers and editors were fired across the board mm. and they're going to be reshooting, redoing things and the question came up is why don't you use the same people that did the Daredevil yeah. Netflix series and yes. the uh, answer to that is Netflix pays creators. Disney cheaps out. Mm. Which is all part of the sag Aptra deal. Mm-hmm. And the WGA. And this is the thing. Like, I, just, I, I, I don't see the problem with, you know, the, uh, just carry on from where you left off in Daredevil and Netflix shows. You know, like you've got a perfectly good point. You do. Port the episode, it's very port complicated. The Port the episodes over to Disney Plus. You've got they're already there. Vincent, you've got Vincent, D- you know D'Onofrio as Kingpin anyway in the role. Charlie Cox, you know, loves the role, and uh, you, yeah, just continue from there. You 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 don't need to do a reboot. Like ah, uh, anyway. All right. Well, I guess with that we will conclude this episode. Um, I guess the next episode will be a review of October Big Finish releases for 2023. We have currently Doctor Who Once in Future Time Lord in Memorial, The Third Doctor Adventures, Intelligence for War, The Passionist Gang and Trespassers 1, Rogue Gallery. We have Doctor or sorry, Torchwood, The Odyssey, which at one point in time they 
I had it spelled the Odyssey, which I really appreciated that more than this one. But uh, then we have that has not come out as of the day of today, which is Doctor Who: What's in Future, the Union, and then of course Liam's favorite, the Omega Factor, the house that wasn't built. Haunted, Haunted you mean? Whatever. <laughs> <clears throat> Can I just say, also, just before we go, you guys said when we when you you two reviewed it mm-hmm. that the War Doctor, the last War Doctor box set, was one of the best releases of the year. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're so right. It's really good. I did tell you it was a good story. I know. <laughs> I know. And I was like, oh, what am I going to listen to today? Let me go through what I've got downloaded. Do I do Time War? No, because that's going to take effort. And it's like, I, I wasn't able to focus on it fully because I was at work. But I was just stopping part way through going, this is really good. <laughs> this is really good. And then at the end, I was like, oh, that cliffhanger. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And then the fact that Adger's Howard is right in the first story in the final box set. Yeah. But yes, with that, gentlemen, I shall love you and leave you. All right. Mm. Sounds good. You have been listening to the Doctor Who Alhambra podcast. Doctor Who is owned and trademarked by the BBC. Doctor Who Alhambra is not affiliated with the BBC or Big Finish. No infringement is intended. Visit our website at alhambrapodcast.weebly.com or email the show at alhambraaudio at gmail.com. Tweet us at alhambrapodcast. That is A-L-H-A-M-B-R-A podcast. Thank you. You know, I I don't want to do any of the uh, top 10 list from yesterday, but (laughs) something popped up on the uh, um, email from Twitter. And can I just say, you know, everybody's entitled to their opinions. There are wrong opinions, Mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, this person, uh, for some reason, it hooked to our account, said my revival of who doctors ranking number one, the 13th slash 12th doctor is their number one favorite doctor. Number two is the ninth doctor. Number three is the fugitive doctor. Number four (laughs) is the 11th doctor. Number five is the War Doctor, and number six is the Tenth Doctor. I swear they need their brains looking at. Yeah. I mean, it was like that. It, that was the one. It was like that video, Leech. I think you, you saw the same thing, and I saw the same thing, and it's what finally made me unsubscribe from Who oh, Culture. Oh, the Who was Culture the, thing. Was the what bloody, was- you know, Doctors ranked, and yeah. And as soon as he, as soon as Sean Ferrick put um, J.D. Whittaker above Patrick Charlton, I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. It just, no. Colin Baker was the last. You know when you're like, no! No, yeah. Like, well, he was the last one. I was like, no, it's, no. no the only no, no. way I'd possibly give that to him is if you're just looking at the classic series. Because yeah, but the thing is, he didn't even go into detail of why he put things where he put things. It was just, oh, here's a ranking. Oh, well, yeah, that, that's garbage and right I, there. Uh, ugh. Yeah, I'm like, no, yep, no. I, I must admit, actually, um, I listened to bits of the um, extras of <clears throat> the uh, A Genius for War, and actually, I found the conversation or the the, uh, the, the Terry Malloy's doctors. Very interesting. He said, my favourite Doctors, and he said, you know, the Doctors he feels have been most pivotal to the show. Guess who he said? Who? Pat Charlton. Mm-hmm. And Christopher Eccleston. Interesting. Because his reasoning, without Pat Charlton, the show wouldn't have continued, and without Christopher Eccleston, the show wouldn't have been rebooted and been brought forward to 60 years to a new audience. So, you know, which I think is a fair point. Mm-hmm. It is. It's a very fair point. And what I like about what he said in that interview on the uh, extras was that, you know, up until, was it Remembrance? 
of the, of the Daleks. You know, Malloy was just a fan. You know, and then and then he got asked by his agent, did he want to come in and do Davros? Resurrection, sorry, and come in and do do Davros. And he was like, yeah. And and then he said, you know, you kind of go from just being a fan to being part of a family, and then it's almost like you know you're kind of you know working with the fans to or for the fans to to to, to bring this character to life. So you know, he said it was kind of an interesting viewpoint. Uh, it's uh, actually a good, good interview for once. Because it isn't isn't just about the whole. Oh, lunch is amazing. I will stuff. say it. it and uh, they have not. Did you know, done... it's been fifteen years for Beth Chalmers uh, at uh, Big Finish. Huh. Interesting. I will say they have not done the uh, lunch thing in the specials in a while. So. Oh, well, that's probably because of COVID. Yeah, well, yeah, everyone's um, working from home. They were like, I, I had an MLS yeah. salad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't good. Out of Greg's. But no, Beth Chalmers has been working for Big Finish for what, 15 years? I think her first appearance was in. <coughs> oh, what was it? I've not heard that one. Oh, God, I can't remember what the first release was she was in, but she said the second release she was in was, of course, she was Rain in um, Anne Rain's Mother in season 27. So, which is hmm. quite apt, really. But it's been 15 years, so got to feel old. Time flies. Yeah, it does. Mm. Time waits for no one. Nope. It's fine. I'm not Liam. I, I won't shirk away from my responsibilities. I'm not shirking. You're just having an event. Yep. I, right. well, I, don't, I have proof if you want to uh, look at the messenger chats. What, that you were napping? No, that I went to, to an actual event. <laughs> it's all right. I believe you. 